Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rahan. I am a fourth year, well, technically a fifth year intercalating student at Imperial College in London doing management. And this is the third time I'm trying to record this video. The first two times I recorded it, I didn't like it. So I put it on my laptop, checked it out, and I was like, nah, this is, I need to do this again. So this is the third time I'm recording this video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to basically fund your elective because electives are expensive and you need to find out how much it roughly costs and how you're going to fund it. So to give you a brief summary, of how much my elective cost me, I would probably put the figure at four and a half thousand pound. It doesn't have to be that expensive, but it can also be more expensive. And this video will be split into three parts. So I'll be talking about how much it roughly costs, where you can find bursaries and grants, and finally, what sort of jobs you can get in order to pay for it. Big thanks to Projects Abroad for making this video possible. They sponsored my elective, and in return, I'm gonna be making some videos for you guys on how to prepare, to plan, and to finance your elective. And also this my elective shirt, one that I got on holiday. So, to start off with, yeah, your elective is very expensive as I've said. Now, initially I wanted to go to New Zealand and when I looked at flights for New Zealand, it was 1,000 pound. You can buy a car, be it a sort of old and broken down car. Well, it doesn't have to be broken down if you're car savvy, then you can get a decent car for 1,000 pound. So I was like, yeah, New Zealand's off the cards. Then I was thinking China or Shanghai in particular, just because they speak English there. Yeah, flights are also expensive to Shanghai. Anyways, I scrapped the idea of that. So flights can vary, okay? So eventually I managed to get flights to Costa Rica for about 250 pound, and that included a night in Canada as well. So I managed to check out Toronto while I was on my way to Costa Rica. Flights can cost around 200 pound, all the way up to 1,000 pound and even more. So that's that. Then there's accommodation. Now accommodation can cost about 100 pound a week to 100 pound a month. If you're looking at Hong Kong, expect to pay about £100 a week, probably even more. If you're looking at Vietnam, expect to pay about £100 a month. And that's reasonable and that's actually that's really cheap. And then there's food, okay? So food, if you factor the cost of food in, in Costa Rica it cost me £5 for a loaf of bread and some Swiss roll. Can you imagine £5 for a loaf of bread and Swiss roll? That would cost me about £2 in the UK. So Costa Rica was extremely expensive for food. I was living off Swiss roll, bread, and banana for a week or two weeks. And then I started to find out where you can get local cheap food from after that. So yeah, it was a struggle. So that's food. And then there's hospital fees as well. Now, places like Barbados, figures that I've heard of, yeah, people have said are about 100 pound a week some places 50 pound a week because it's a two, it's like an elective hotspot destination so they will exploit the students that's why i went to costa rica i didn't have to pay any hospital fees vietnam projects abroad managed to organize and sort everything out for me for that you have to also factor that in so if you go for eight weeks and it's 100 pound a week expect to pay 800 pound for the duration of your elective and then there's visas as well. Now visas can cost about 50 pound and then vaccines can cost about 100 pound and social costs. Now social costs were about 500 pound for four weeks, I would say, just because there's tour guides, there's tours, there's like traveling from one place to another and go-karting, par like paragliding, things like this. Like these aren't cheap stuff. So expect to pay a little bit of money for that as well. In terms of like the two places, you can look for bursaries and grants I would recommend the Royal Medical Benevolent Fund and the BMA database. So the Royal Medical Benevolent Fund has over like 30 different charities and organizations that give out bursaries and grants for people who are applying um, for, or to do their elective. And they give it based on like specialties and stuff. So say for example, you're doing a dermatology uh, elective in a country, then the Dermatology Society will give you some money if you write them a CV or a personal statement. And the same with the BMA database. The BMA database, you have to have an account with the BMA, but it's free for medical students, so that's not a problem. And that's how you access the BMA database. But those are the two places you can find bursaries and grants. And believe me, 
there are a lot of bursaries and grants available and my friends have like managed to pay for a lot of their electives through these bursaries and grants so it saves you having to work or have a job to pay for these now the third part of the video i said was how can you make the money the ways in which you can make the money i would recommend number one is tutoring okay so tutoring you can make around 30 pound an hour some places 15 pound an hour some places 50 pound an hour in london some hotspot destinations okay so there's a lot of money in tutoring and there's plenty of places where you can find clients so that's that you can work as a waiter at a restaurant and restaurant waitering is actually really good money if you get good tips and if you work in a like a high class restaurant so i worked in a really nice restaurant one time and well for a long time actually and one night i got like 80 pound tips from one table just because i managed to get the customers to do some handstands and roly polies in the middle of the restaurant and they got very drunk and uh, we had a good laugh and eventually they started just throwing money at me just like yeah i was like okay i've done a good job brilliant I'm happy, they're happy. But waitering is a lot of money as well. I'd recommend getting retail, but if you get retail, get a temporary retail job. So say for example, Christmas or Easter, they pay extra because it's a temporary job. So expect a bit more above the minimum wage. Also sign up to agencies because agencies offer short-term jobs and at short notice, and you can get paid like 10 pound an hour, sometimes eight pound an hour, sometimes 11 pound an hour, just because they're short notice, short term, quick jobs and they need you ASAP. That's basically how much an elective roughly costs and also how you can finance your elective. Now, like I said, um, a big thank you to Projects Abroad. So Projects Abroad specialize in electives, whether it's medicine, dentistry, midwifery, business, or even politics, like they're literally any subject can go. And they basically organize your whole elective for you, which makes it a lot easier. So while I was going through a stressful time and just I had a lot of things to do, Projects Abroad managed to organize everything for me, my accommodation, my hospital, my transfers from the airport, all of that sorted out, even my food. My food was ready for me when I got home. The only thing that I had to make was breakfast and all I did was pour cereal into a bowl and pour milk and my lunch, my dinner and everything was ready for me. So it is a nice and easy way to do your elective. So if you want, check out the link in the description and also you will get a discount if you use my code. So Make sure you check that out if you're thinking of doing your elective. But thank you for watching and bye for now.